So hello everyone welcome to Positron Academy and today's topic of discussion is on transport of radioactive materials. So the first question is what is a radioactive material and why they need to be transported. So radioactive material are those material which are not stable and which uh, spontaneously decay by emitting alpha, beta and gamma radiations. And these have a great role in uh, diagnosis and therapy this alpha, beta and gamma radiation. So gamma specifically is important for uh, diagnostic applications and this alpha, beta are for therapeutic application. Uh, apart from their role in medicine, they are also being used in industry for non-destructive testing and process control. And these uh, radioactive materials are either indigenously produced from breed or imported from abroad and these days we have multiple uh, medical cyclotron unit where they produce these uh, radio pharmaceutical and, uh, and transport to multiple centers nearby. So that's breed which transports its, uh, its pharmaceutical uh, 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 which they produce and to multiple centers across India. So for example being uh, one center is in Kolkata, one center is in Delhi, one center is in Assam. So they, it transports from its uh, from its own uh, from its uh, production house to production unit to the uh, center and the material is supposed to be transported through public domain so it's been transported through public domain only so and these are different uh, transport activities over here so it can be an international transport for import and export uh, it can be an inland transport from supplier to the user it can be the transport of radioactive waste from hospital to the waste disposal facility or it can be the movement of radioactive isotope from one place to the another. So these are four different types of transport activities which are possible for this uh, radioactive materials. But since our transport is undertaken through public domain, so safety is of prime concern. So safety of the public and the workers who are involved in tra uh, transporting or handling of these radioactive consignments uh, must be taken care of. So now the question is what are the possible hazards with the transportation of this radioactive material. So the type of hazard it depends on the nature, it depends on the activity, it depends on physical and chemical form of these radionuclides. So the radiation emitted from these uh, radionuclides are definitely harmful and there is always a possibility of external and internal radiation exposure. And for this reason we have to keep emphasis on these two different uh, uh, parameters and these are containment and shielding. So proper containment is important to prevent leakage or release of this radioactivity during transport and shielding is important because it minimizes the extent of uh, external exposure. And so definitely there has to be some defined rules for the transporting for the transport of radioactive materials. So uh, we have national regulations of safe transport and of radioactive and uh, radioactive materials issued by AERB and it says what should be done and also and these regulations are in turn again are based on the IAEA's FA series 6. So what are the highlights of regulation? So definitely uh, whenever you are regulating something there has to be prime objective behind the regulation. So the prime objective of regulation is that the person or the property and the environment should be uh, safe from this effect of radiation hazard uh, due to the transport of these radioactive materials. And some salient point, the transporting of this uh, radioactive material in packages or prescribed format, so we cannot transport in any format, there has to be some defined uh, uh, prescribed design by which these have to be transported. And this packaging should be able to withstand uh, rigors of uh, normal condition as well as uh, the accident condition of transport. So it has to be in such a way that eventually accident occurs, it has to be, it has, it has to contain this radioactivity inside the box only. And that is a graded approach is applied uh, which requires a varying degree of integrity of packaging and uh, commensurate uh, with the activity of the nature of the radioactive material. So now the next question is how are the uh, radioactive material transported. So they are transported in a multiple forms and uh, multiple not form they are transported in two different forms. And these are what you call a spatial form and the normal form. So spatial form means that radioactivity is sealed is in a sealed source or something similar to it. So specifically it means that radioactivity is sealed up inside a welded metal capsule something like this and these are again further packed in a defined protocol. So these are further packed in a packages of approved design as per regulation. So what is normal form? The normal form is something which is not other, which is other than the special form. So normal form uh, also called as other than special form is everything else. 
so these are unsealed so for special from these are these are all sealed sources but for normal from we are using unsealed radioactive material and it, it could be any containment soil from a from a uh, remediation project or it can be radio pharmaceutical which is engineered for therapy or diagnosis or any radioactive chemicals which are being engineered for use in research so now the next question is what is what we mean by the term called as package so package of radioactive materials means packing uh, means packaging and marking and labeling so what are the common features of it so it must be a containment system so again what is containment system what is containment so containment is defined as the utilization of engineering controls to prevent the escape of materials which are hazardous to health from into the surrounding workplace so if something is over here some materials over here should not go and spill out it has to be contained inside this box only so that is we call as containment system shielding the gamma ray photons which are coming out of these uh, radioactive materials should not go and ex expose you more we have to shield them so that gamma rays become gets more attenuation get more attenuated and heat removal in case of large radioactivity and some criticality and, and some critically safety in the case of certain materials so now what are the different types of packages containing radioactive materials so it can be an accepted package it can be in type a package or it can be in b type b package and type b can be type b u and type b m so we'll talk more about it in some slides i guess so what is an accepted package so it contains extremely low levels of radioactivity with very low level of hazard so accepted packages are authorized for limited quantities of radioactive material that would pose a very low hazard if released in an accident and these are prescribed in transport regulations as accepted quantities and such packages are accepted from uh, from any regulatory requirements next is type a so type a materials or type a are something like so radioactive materials with higher specific activity levels are shipped in type a packages so any material any radioactive material which is higher specific activity are being shipped in type a packages so and these are designed in such a way they can withstand normal conditions of transport and these type a packages prior departure are being tested for records of transport simulating normal conditions like uh, water spray test free drop test or stacking test and penetration test so these are all the tests which this package passes through before being transported to its, or, uh, to its actual consignee and regulations requires that the package protect its contents and maintain sufficient shielding under conditions normally encountered during transportation. So typically type A packages are used to transport radio pharmaceuticals or any radioactive material for medical use and certain regulatory qualified industrial products. So next is type B. So if activity is something more than that of the critical limit of type A packages, we'll talk more about the critical limit in some slides. So if activity is more than the that of the type A package critical uh, critical activity zone or maximum maximum activity of for type A, then is that then is that is what we call as the type B package. And one more resort to this type B U and type B M. So we'll talk more about it in the next slide. So so shippers use this type of package to transport materials that would present a radiation hazard to the public or the environment if they are very majorly. So so type B is being only used when we are transporting some radioactive materials which poses a greater margin of hazard. So if it spills to the environment, if it spills outside the containment box, there is a possible chance of causing hazard to the environment of the person nearby. So this is something more rigorous than type A. So type A pack, type B package must not only demonstrate its ability to withstand test simulating normal shipping condition, but also it must be also in such a way it can withstand severe accident conditions without releasing its contents outside. So type B packages are used to transport materials with high levels of radioactivity like a, like a spent fuel from a nuclear power plants. So that is for type B. So I told you about type B U and type BW. So type BU for universal package. And these are approved by the competent authority and does not be revalidated by the competent authority of other country. But for type BW, it is a multilateral package which is approved by competent authority, but it needs to be revalidated by the competent authority of the other country through its through which the package is being enrouted. So these are the activity limits for the packages for type A. For IoT 131, the 
activity for special form is 80 milli 80 curie and activity in uh, in in other than special form or, or in unsealed form it is 10 milli 10 curie so you cannot transport more than 10 curie in a vial all right so these are all the limits for different nucleates in special form and in other than special form that's the maximum activity we can load in a defined package so in type B package, large activities of radioactive materials can be transported since it's designed to meet the accident conditions of transport. And activities used for transporting in type B exceeds a limit that, that, that is defined for type A since it can withstand harsh conditions of transport. So next is what are the, pack, what are the radiation levels permitted on the surface of the package. So packages are again classified into multiple categories or more important into three categories. But how do you define the categories? So they are defined based on some criteria. So for the determination of the category of the package, the radiation level on the surface of the package and the transport index of the package should be known. So that is radiation level on the surface. That's the package, so radiation level on the surface and transport index should be measured. So what is transport index? It is a maximum radiation level in milliamp per hour at 1 meter from the external surface of the package. So these are categories of package. It can be either category 1, category 2, category 3. And that's the limit of maximum radiation level at the external surface of the package. So for type 1, it has to be less than 0.5 milliamp per hour and the transport index should be 0. For category 2, the maximum limit at the external surface is 50 milliamp per hour or in a range from 0.5 to 50 milliamp per hour and the transport index is 10, uh, is 1. And for type 3, it's 200 milliamp per hour and an TI of 10. And these are for other units in, uh, in millisievert per hour. All right, so that's for type one, category one, category two, category three, and some levels it contains, like suppose it contains something, what it contains for type two, suppose category two, it contains suppose iodine 131, then activity, how much it contains, suppose uh, 300 millicurie, and what's the transport index, we'll write it down over here, so it's about 0.7 or 0.8, whatever it be, and that's the UN number. So what you the next is what you want what uh, so information one should look for on the on for the package. So first is the complete address of the consignor who is sending in this package. Next is the complete address of the consignee or the receiver. Then type of package whether it is type A, type B, all right, and category of the package category one, two, three, and the name of the radionuclide which nuclide is it iodine, technetium, gallium its activity and transport index and also the weight but if weight is more than 30 kg and the proper shipping name the UN number but what is UN number this is hazard index basically for example for uh, radioactive isotope it's 7 so this UN hazard identification number indicates content has a radioactive material so for that's, that's the number for radioactive, radioactive material that is like for 6 it's poison for 3 it's inflammable, it's inflammable material, for 8 it's acid. So even number tells you what type of material is inside the box. It's an is a kind of identification number for hazardous material, hazardous materials. So now what are the documents which are required to be accompanied, accompanied with the package? So first is a tram card. So what is tram card? It's a transport emergency card or we call it tram card. And this card are uh, so the transport emergency card are cars that workers carry all the time when their work involves transporting these type of materials so tram card it carry information about the particular good being transported and provide instruction to the driver or emergency responders in case of an event or an accident so tram card has to be there in the package next is the consignor declaration it, con it must contain the full address of both consignor and the consignee, the nature of radiation, the nature of radio radioactive material, the activity, the type of package, category of the package, and multiple things. And lastly, it must have authorization letter or transport certificate from the competent authority. We must have an NOC from the ARDB that you are trying to transport these materials. 
So which the competent authority in India to enforce this regulation? That's the chairman of AERB or Atomic Energy Regulatory Board, and that is only for India. So what are the responsibilities of consigner? So the consigner has multiple roles to perform. So the package deployed for transport should comply with the standard specified by the company authority. So whatever you are trying to transport, it must be in accordance with the standards which are being specified by the company authority. Next is package to be properly prepared and the source to be in the containment region of the package and the package is in good condition. Thirdly, the rotation at the external surface and the TI should be the limits as given by the ARB. And also the non-fixed contamination at external surface should not exceed these limits. For beta and gamma, it should not exceed 4 bacterial per centimeter square. And for alpha meters, it should not cross 0.4 bacterial per centimeter square. So these are critical, uh, uh, critical limits which this uh, some non-fixed contamination must not exceed. So what are the responsibilities of consigner? The package has to be properly labeled. The package should be marked as a radioactive consignment in all documents, all documents, whatever documents you have, they must have been written, it, it must be written that it's radioactive in nature. And packages of category 2 and 3 should not be transported in passenger compartments of train, flight or shared public transport vehicles. And the number of category 2 and 3 packages transported in a single vehicle should not exceed the cumulative transport of 50. Alright, so whatever number you have, but the total TI value should not be more than 50. If it's more than you cannot transport a single vehicle, you need multiple vehicles for transporting it. So what are the off normal or emergency situation during transport of radioactive material? So off normal means some, something out of your uh, comfort zone. So it can be uh, there can be damage to the package due to improper handling. There can be uh, the package might have engulfed in fire or there is theft of the package or there is some misplacement of the package or loss of identity of the package or package is unclaimed. So how to handle such uh, off normal conditions? So tram card or we call as transport emergency card. So first is do not panic and if someone is injured, rescue the injured and provide any medical aid. And if there is any fire, then just fight with the fire, just try to, uh, try to get rid of the fire and also cordon off at least 5 meter distance from the package. So because package contains radioactivity, so as, as close you are from the package, more exposure to getting. So at least 5 meters will give you a reasonable exposure. So and study the condition of the package from a safe distance. Study it from this distance and see everything is okay or not. And then miss, and then get a call to the consigner about the accident. And take actions as recommended by them. So that's all for today about transport of radioactive materials. And I guess you love the video and if you like this video, Please do like, share, and subscribe and support me in making more videos. So thank you so much for watching the video.